Welcome to Straight Talk on Social Media. This is Ian Escher, Digital Marketing Specialist from Pivot, talking to you on a, what is a lovely Friday morning here in Portland, Oregon. Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, getting the most out of LinkedIn today, which had been pushed back from our session last time. But first, before we do that, let's go ahead and jump into the news with a reminder that uh, on your GoToWebinar control panel, you do have the ability to ask questions should you need to. So the first thing uh, to talk about is that Facebook is now allowing users to tag uh, company pages within uh, their photo tagging. So you can see the example here if you wanted to tag Coca-Cola or uh, another company that you like uh, in one of your photos, you can do that. Um, it's, you know, I suppose if, if you really wanted to tag your favorite brand, if you love it that much, there would be a good reason to do so. It certainly is a benefit for uh, companies, one more way to sort of be marketed through Facebook and through the popular photo sharing uh, technology that Facebook has. Now you may have heard uh, the it made national news uh, actually about Facebook uh, was caught in a smear campaign, trying to do a smear campaign against Google's uh, privacy practices. Uh, Facebook hired a, a uh, very well-known public relations firm called Burson Marsteller uh, and they sort of orchestrated a campaign to get stories published in the mainstream media uh, portraying uh, Google as having violated the right, privacy rights of millions of people. Um, and Facebook owned up to this and uh, it has, has shed negative light on them, uh, although some analysts say that they think it's negative light that's going to pass pretty quickly, uh, as many of these social media sort of scandals do. So. Anyway, just a, uh, something to note here in the ongoing Google-Facebook rivalry. Uh, there's a, a, some other news being made recently by some lawsuits coming out against Facebook. Uh, Facebook has a, a feature, uh, has introduced something where if you like a particular page, unless you have a setting in your privacy settings that says that Facebook cannot use you uh, and your image in an ad, uh, then if, if, you, if you've turned that or left that on, then what can happen is that if you like a certain page on Facebook, then there might be an ad for that page with your image next to it um, that somebody else would see saying, hey, so-and-so liked this, so you might want to like it too. Uh, and that's become something that Facebook is being sued over when it comes to minors using Facebook, because what happens when a person who's under 18 uh, you know, has their picture used in an ad. That, that violates uh, some rules about, about using minors in ads. Uh, it's also come out recently that although Facebook's terms of use say that you have to be at least 13 to, uh, to use Facebook, some 7.5 million of Facebook's users are actually under the age of 13. Uh, and so they are, are, you know, just lying on the terms of use in order to get in. So this is becoming a sort of a big issue, something that Facebook is going to have to deal with uh, fairly soon, probably. And definitely something to know about, uh, again, for uh, particularly for those of you who, who run Facebook um, educational events, this is an important thing to tell people about uh, in terms of, of privacy settings and making sure that children are safe. Um, just know which privacy settings you need to have set up uh, so that this sort of thing won't happen because you can keep any of your images from being used in Facebook ads. It's, it's right within the privacy settings. Uh, other news, speaking of privacy, um, both Facebook and Google were in, uh, representatives from those companies were in Washington, D.C. Uh, this week and they were talking to Congress uh, about privacy in, uh, in mobile phones and, uh, and things like that and other privacy settings within uh, the two technologies. Uh, both are, are trying to, uh, to work against uh, some, some measures that would, would force uh, more privacy to, to be the norm. Um, and so uh, it's, we'll, we'll keep you updated on any news that comes from that, but it's just something that is, that is happening right now is that uh, uh, Facebook and Google are, are trying to sort of lobby their way into uh, the privacy settings that they would like to see uh, remain uh, in terms of how their technology is used. Moving away from Facebook finally, we are going to be talking about LinkedIn in this webinar, 
And uh, LinkedIn went public. Uh, it had its initial public offering this uh, earlier this week. Um, and they initially started selling shares at $45, but uh, within hours that had shot up to $90 a share. Uh, and so they're, in some ways people are really excited about this. Uh, they think that uh, you know, this is great news for, for LinkedIn. It certainly is being uh, valued at, it, it was valued at $4.25 billion. Now it's, it's jumped up actually to 8.5. It's doubled in its valuation. Uh, and some people worry that maybe this is sort of a, a bubble that's going to burst um, because uh, LinkedIn does not have fantastic uh, user numbers in the same way that Facebook and Google and those, those sorts of services do. Uh, so it will remain to be seen what happens with LinkedIn stock. Uh, it's one of the uh, you know, few social companies to go public and, and as more and more do, it's going to be interesting to see what happens with those stock prices over time. Uh, and whether there is, in fact, uh, the way there was with the dot-coms in the early 2000s, whether there might be some sort of a, a social bubble that bursts as well. And finally, our one to watch this week is a, uh, a company called Bloomspot. Uh, Bloomspot is a Groupon competitor. It's, it is uh, basically a, a deals site, um, except that there are a couple of differences in terms of how it's set up. Um, uh, Bloomspot CEO uh, said that there are have been some misconceptions about uh, how deals programs should work. Uh, he says, first of all, the deal ha has to be profitable for the merchant uh, because otherwise the deals just just make them lose money. Uh, and uh, he also sees that uh, there are there are really four dominant deals sites out there right now, and outside of uh, those top four, uh, many are doing very little business. And so there is room for uh, expansion, and that's why he, uh, you know, the boom spot is sort of coming onto the scene now. Uh, and also it is, it is uh, the, the CEO of Bloomspot is, is saying that it's, it's not about offering uh, deals to sort of inexpensive places, uh, but rather, you, not, not something where you're going to save 5 or $10, but rather about offering deals that normally have a real price barrier. So for sort of more expensive high-end items uh, that sort of have a particular uh, cultural cash to them, um, that's going to be sort of Bloomspot's focus. So it'll be interesting to see what happens here if, if Bloomspot's model of helping it be easier for uh, merchants to make money uh, off of these deals, whether this is, ends up being successful. Uh, and again, we'll, we'll, we'll track that for you. Now we're going to move into the focus, getting the most out of LinkedIn. Uh, I did a similar webinar on Yelp not so long ago, getting the most out of Yelp. And what I did was talk about Yelp for individuals first, and then I went on to talk about Yelp for businesses. And I'm going to do the exact same thing here. First, I'm going to talk about LinkedIn for individuals, and then I'll talk about what LinkedIn does for businesses. Now the primary purpose of LinkedIn is to be a professional networking tool, and you've probably heard me say that before. Uh, it's easy to sign up, uh, as is typical, uh, with an email and, and that sort of thing. And then your pro the profile you create ends up looking a lot like a resume, and you can actually even upload your resume in PDF or Word format, and LinkedIn will use that resume to sort of automatically populate some of your information into fields within LinkedIn. Uh, and, so, and so really the, the profile ends up looking much more like a professional profile than it would on a, a site like Facebook or something like that. This is what my LinkedIn profile looks like. It shows my uh, current positions, uh, one at, here at Pivot as a digital marketing specialist, and I'm also the part-time pastor of a church. Uh, some of my past work history, education, and so on. Uh, you can connect to people uh, like you do on Facebook, and these are often both friends and professional contacts. Um, at the top of your profile, you can write a brief description of who you are and what you specialize in. I've written pastor and social media specialist, which is a sort of odd combination, I realize. Uh, and then it shows uh, where I'm from and, and uh, sort of what categories I might fall into. Uh, the profile shows, also shows information about what kind of connections I might be looking for, whether it's looking for a job, looking to network with people, uh, willing to be asked questions about a particular profession, and, and so on. You do have the ability to uh, post status updates, um, just like in Facebook. Uh, so you can see the example here, and you can see the little Twitter button, which allows you to uh, 
push this status to your Twitter account as well. Uh, and there are settings there about who, who you want this to be visible to. Um, but uh, this is one way LinkedIn didn't, didn't used to have these status updates and has added them in to uh, sort of mimic a little bit what Facebook does uh, in terms of letting people describe what's going on with them. Now you can see I mentioned that you have uh, individual connections with people. You can see the start of my list of connections here. Uh, obviously, LinkedIn is like Facebook in that you are expected to be yourself on LinkedIn. Um, uh, in fact, even even uh, on LinkedIn, even more so than on Facebook, having a fictitious profile would really be pointless. There's nothing, not much you can do to uh, be spamming people. There's no gaming on LinkedIn, that sort of thing. Uh, and you can see that the people that I that are, I'm connected to are people that I've worked with before, or uh, just people I know. Now, one of the great things that LinkedIn lets you do is ask for recommendations from people that you've worked with uh, or people you've worked under or over. Uh, and those recommendations then uh, get added to your profile. And uh, depending on your settings, people can come in and look at those recommendations and, and see what other people have said about you. Uh, this is, again, uh, for individuals, a, a great way to network and uh, and especially if you are in a job search, you know, to be, to be uh, connecting with people and letting them see uh, how good of an employee you've been based on other people's recommendations. And then they have a new section, a relatively new section called Jobs You May Be Interested In. Um, uh, it's, it, it's a feature that, uh, again, that they've, they've added not so long ago. And they use information from your profile, your past work history and that sort of thing. Uh, to generate a list of jobs that have been posted on LinkedIn uh, to see what might be interesting to you. Uh, and so you can see here what, they're, what they are listing for me. They're all uh, jobs that are related in some way to what I have on my work experience. Um, uh, so an interesting feature, again, particularly useful for people who are uh, looking for work. There are groups on LinkedIn that you can join or request to join. Uh, this is, I would say, if, if there is something that is similar to, uh, to company pages on Facebook, it may be this a little more than the actual uh, company pages on LinkedIn, which I'll show you in just a minute. Uh, groups you actually have to request to be in, um, and, and you send a message asking why you want to be uh, part of that group and that sort of thing. Uh, just another way, though, to connect people and again, really to connect to, to common interests um, within LinkedIn. 